what is up guys welcome back to another video today we're going to be doing a deck profile here for crystal beasts now i've had so many deck profiles for other decks out there and it's just taken so long for me to actually put crystal beasts up now this deck wasn't something that i was planning to get uh i actually didn't plan on buying the crystal beast structure deck it's just that one day i went out i forgot my de my decks out there and uh yeah, I just ended up having to buy the structure deck, building it, and pretty much playing it right out of the box. Uh, I was basically going out uh, to my local community, hoping to play uh, multiple card games, and uh, one of the card games I'd forgot to pack was uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! So with that being said, I just bought the structure decks that were available there, and uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely really fun to build up this deck. Um, most of the choices of course are going to be the quite standard plays or, or at least the standard choices that you would pick for the cards here but I uh, kind of like built my way around that as well so that it would better fit within my uh, local store. So with that being said this is my take on it uh, but feel free to build your way um, revolving around it in your own style. But before we get started I would like to uh, remind you guys to subscribe like drop comment share this video it really does help uh, but with that being said let's begin so starting off with the monsters i'm going to be playing my one copy here of the rainbow dragon honestly you don't really need too many copies of this anymore uh, this is something that uh, it just doesn't come up as often and if anything it's a bit of a brick uh, what you do want to actually be going for though is you want to go for your crystal beast rainbow dragon so this is the crystal beast uh, new variant of it and this is the one that's significantly better for the deck itself of course at this point i'm sure many of you have already aware of what it can actually do so i'm not going to mull over it and this is basically the ratio that you would normally go for but i have seen other people play ratios of two and two that could work as well but generally speaking it's either two or two or one and three Next up, we have three copies of uh, Sapphire Pegasus. Of course, we have to play Sapphire Pegasus. This is uh, pretty much the only starter in your deck, really. Uh, of course, there are ways to search it out, uh, ways to get it out uh, a lot sooner as well. And uh, what's mainly good about this particular card is that it's not a hard once per turn. So if you somehow manage to get all three of them onto your spell and trap zone and then you summon them all out using your Ruby Carbuncle, then you're essentially triggering three copies of the uh, Sapphire Pegasus. And of course, if you manage to get it back out again and resummon it, you can keep going. It could pretty much be a bit of a loop if you uh, know how to go away with this particular deck. Now, I'm not particularly proficient with this deck, but I do know someone who is capable of uh, getting Crystal Beast uh, Sapphire Pegasus uh, to pop off about seven or eight times in one turn, which is uh, definitely really impressive. And I'm sure it could definitely be pushed a lot further than that as well. But aside from that, I'm also going to be incorporating the Advanced Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus. Now this is going to be a slightly odd build compared to the usual uh, Crystal Beast, but it is still something I quite commonly see as well. But uh, adding in the Advanced Crystal Beast is something that I have been testing out and it has been working pretty interestingly for this particular deck. But one copy of this is pretty much all you need and it definitely supplements it quite a bit. Next up, we're playing two copies of Ruby Carbuncle. Uh, I've seen builds that play only one copy. I honestly think that two copies is a lot better. It comes up a lot more often than you might think. So that's just my personal opinion there. We're also going to be playing the one Topaz Tiger, the one Amber Mammoth, the one Cobalt Eagle, the Emerald Tortoise, and also the Amethyst Cat. Uh, this is basically just to get the remaining Crystal Beast cards. They're not essential unless you are going for your big fusions out there. But aside from that, you only need one copy of the ones that aren't really played. It's mainly Ruby Carbuncle and Sapphire Pegasus that you want in this deck at multiple copies. Now, of course, it's something that's kind of expected, but we are also playing the uh, Advanced Crystal Beast Ruby Carbuncle. We're playing the Advanced Crystal Beast Amethyst Cat, uh, the Topaz Tiger, and also the Cobalt Eagle as well. I feel like these are the ones that are... Uh, probably the uh, ones I would normally go with and yeah it's just mainly the effects tend to come up a lot more if I have to play the advanced crystal beasts 
uh, it would be these ones in particular that I find to be a bit more versatile in a sense and We'll get to that once we get to the structured, uh, once we get to the extra deck as well, because there is a really important card I wanted to bring up as well regarding the advanced crystal beast synergy. Now, as for hand traps, I'm just choosing to play Vela in this case. Uh, only reason I'm playing Vela here over something like Ash is because I just don't really have issues with the opponent searching for stuff. But if they have stuff that can, say, activate and trigger things off, then you want to stop that right away. I feel like Effect Veil is just a lot more effective in this particular case. Not to mention, I play against someone who's really good at trap tricks. So with that being said, this is something I kind of also choose over the impermanence as well. Now moving on to spells, we're going to be playing three copies here of Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. This card is actually pretty nice. Uh, it's a bit of a disruptor in its own right, but it also just uh, gets a bit of the engine running as well. We're also playing three copies here of Rainbow Bridge. I mean, it just searches out all of your spells and traps. And we're also playing three copies of the Crystal Bond as well. I think none of these are to be of a surprise in any way, mainly the ratios that everyone is going with. Uh, one of the most broken cards in the deck is uh, Golden Rule. Uh, this card is just on another level, really. It's basically like a custom card. I reckon two is more than enough to allow you to pretty much end the game. But that being said, definitely go out looking for these because this doesn't come in the structure deck, but it's well worth getting. All right, so this card, you guys might already expect it, but it's not in a typical Crystal Beast build. I'm playing the Advanced Dark. Advanced Dark is a really interesting card, but my main purpose of playing this particular card is to actually make all my Crystal Beast cards dark and we'll pretty much get to it later on once we uh, reach the extra deck. The last of the spells I'm playing is actually uh, three copies of Forbidden Chalice. So Chalice is similar case, it is the alternative to Impermanence because look I'm just playing against a Trap Tricks player and uh, he is insanely good, like probably one of the best Trap Tricks players out there. Um, I haven't seen anyone actually better than him in terms of uh, knowing how to pilot that particular deck. And no offense to Pack, but my mate would easily destroy him when it comes to a Trap Tricks mirror match. Now to end things off with the trap cards, I'm going to be playing the one copy of Conclave. This card is a bit optional because Conclave Control is something that can be its own separate build. I just felt that there was enough room to fit it in and it hasn't really caused many issues, it kind of is a bit of a mishmash of everything and if you normally want to play Conclave Control then you normally would just build a different variant of this deck but it's working out fine for me. But to end things off I'm playing the 2 Crystal Miracle as well, just a really good card, I mean there's not really much else to say about it, but that pretty much wraps it up for this particular deck. It's mainly the uh, extra deck that we'll get to that uh, really shines for this particular deck. So to no surprise we are obviously going to be playing the uh, Crystal Beast uh, Rainbow Dragon Overdrive. Now I prefer to play 2 copies of this one and we're playing 1 copy of the old Overdragon. Uh, the Overdragon just doesn't come up as often anymore, but uh, either way though, most of your end boards is going to be ending up with uh, both copies of this on the field. At that point, you pretty much have won the game. For the Link Monsters, we're going to be playing here one copy of the Unchained Abomination. This is more so a spicy tech, just because it works out uh, with this particular deck here. Um, you are going for... Uh, this way of popping your own cards. Uh, this is a Crystal Beast deck, so they just go to the Spell and Trap Zone. So against Unchained, this deck actually does incredibly well. Uh, we're also going to be playing a really interesting package here. I haven't seen any other builds incorporate these, but I'm incorporating the Tri Brigades, uh, mainly because the Crystal Beasts are actually um, a mixture of Beasts, Beast, uh, well, not Beast Warriors, but it's just Beasts and Wing Beasts, which uh, is something that is uh, definitely very interesting for this particular deck. So 
Uh, with that being said, the Tri Brigade engine actually works out incredibly well. This is something that I personally am playing. You guys can try it out. If it doesn't work for you, then you could always play something else instead. Cards that I think are a bit more on the generic side, we have the Borosword Dragon. A uh, bit overkill with this particular card. You don't really need to play it, but it is something that can potentially end games as well. Uh, but I'm also playing the Nightmare Package as well. Just think it's really nice. And of course, the uh, IP Mascarina as well. Uh, definitely a fantastic card to uh, just pretty much on those turns where you just don't have something as uh, full-fledged, then you just go for your Mascarina and uh, hold it from there. All right, so now let's talk about the Advanced Dark. So the Advanced Dark Field Spell is just... An amazing card it allows for your cards to actually be dark and because of that it gives us room to actually play the Raiders Knight and the Ark Rebellion Xyz Dragon uh, this card in itself is a bit of an OTK as, as well you know so uh, definitely really fantastic it's always a fun card to pull out because uh, it does catch people off guard however this is uh, more so an idea that was inspired by someone actually who plays Crystal Beasts a lot better than I and uh, yeah, hopefully one day I could uh, show off his deck profile as well, um, if you'll allow me. But uh, with that being said, this is definitely uh, one that is inspired from his particular build. Uh, yeah, it's definitely incredibly fun. But the final XCs we're playing in this deck is the Levier, the Sea Dragon. This card is very interesting. You could actually bring it out quite easily. Just being able to uh, bring back your banished cards is uh, very fun. Of course it does have to be a level 4 lower but most of the time you are looking to bring out your sapphire pegasus anyway so it's just that additional bonus though this particular card in itself is pretty interchangeable in this particular deck however that being said this was pretty much the deck profile for uh, crystal beasts i have been finding this to be quite fun it's not necessarily something that i take too seriously but in our locals, you can definitely catch people off guard given that this deck is inherently very easy to pull off an OTK with. Plus, the tiny spicy text that I've incorporated into this, or spicy engines that I've incorporated into this, have uh, definitely allowed me to kind of like work my way through a locals and uh, just uh, snatch a win unexpectedly from the opponent. So, yeah, with that being said, uh, definitely leave me your thoughts on uh, this particular build. Otherwise, uh, drop down in the comment section what your particular build is as well, because there are so many different variations you could try out for this uh, particular deck, and that's kind of what makes it so fun. So with that being said, thanks for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll see you all next time.